Coming Home, the story of Asya. I'm home. I've been staying at Alexi's. Her parents don't know. Alexi's parents are big on education. And since I've missed so many days of school at Manhattan Prep, the grant that allowed me to attend is gone. I've talked a lot of shit about that place, but I miss it. School has always been an escape from the realities of my life. Sure, I didn't speak to many people outside of Alexi and a couple of kids from my seven classes. And sure, I wasn't the most diligent of students. Excuse me if I didn't fit into the one size doesn't fit all American schooling system. I have always struggled to squeeze myself into places in which I do not belong. The steady anxieties billowing in my belly for as long as I can remember are, or were, the pressures of the perimeters of the space I attempted to belong in thrusting against my flesh. These days when I get anxious about where my life is headed, my spirit team reminds me, all is well, everything is going to be okay. My spirit team consists of benevolent energies and spirits from spaces beyond and between the cosmos and angelic realms. My time in the astral realm, while encaged by the mad scientist, intensely reconnected me to the spirit realms. Looking for the jewels in the rubble, I picked up a few gems. The pain I experienced while being imprisoned by Jerry watered the crop of my true self. The agony of finding true love and chase only for him to run away caused me to feel pain in places that I once thought were decayed. To feel is to be alive. If my heart can survive cavernous abandonment wounds, the rest of me has no excuse to not be all that I can be. After all, I now know I am not alone. The little voice in my head that I ignored most of my life, that was my spirit team. These days I listen and try to take heed. I spend my days adventuring through the NYC streets. I can feel the history of this place in the cool breeze. I love the vibrancy of the exposed brick cafes smelling of fresh coffee grounds and oozing with the sounds of warm chatter. I frequent museums as well as performing art shows. All of my quests through the city are afforded by Chase. Chase sends me money and I accept. Fear keeps Chase away Guilt is the motivation behind Chase's fiat transfers. After all, Chase is perpetuating the cycles of desertion in which both he and I were traumatized by. I wonder if Chase cares to know how much I'd rather experience his presence of the conversation he offers in his place. I know Chase's fickleness means the setup won't last for too much longer. I have to find some sort of independence. I'm being guided to step into a new beginning. I'm usually one of fear change but something new would be nice. My soul desires to fulfill the mission in which Chase and I are set to traverse as a team. Chase is gone, so I am on my own. I do remember I am not alone. Excuse me. A guy in a black trench coat, boots, and a beanie hat says as he glides through the crowded sidewalk. I watched as a guy in black shimmy through the crowd, stopped on the pedestrian pathway in front of Cafe Manhattan. A trombone player set up shop filling the air with sweet notes and tones. Another thing I love about the city, the creative juices flow through the streets and breezeways. You know, music is a commonality that every universe, realm, and space shares. This explains my love for it, as if I needed a reason to love music. If I did, this would be it. Music resonates with my soul because in every lifetime, music is a thing that I know. To an untrained eye, the guy in the black might appear to be simply stopping to enjoy the crooning, but I feel different. Hey, I say to the guy in black as I peer behind him, I saw that. The guy in black, still giving me his back, slightly turns his head. Come with me, he says as he grabs my hand and pulls me into the cafe. You saw what? I respond hesitantly. You lifted the trombone player's money from his bucket with telekinesis. How did you? Shh. He cut me short with a shush. His energy is different. As I walk through the city, I collide with energetic auras of many people. Most people's energies are more of the same. This guy's energy is an energy in which is unnamed. I haven't been introduced to the light in which he is. I want to learn. I say to him, wait, you're not freaked out? What's your name? No. Believe it or not, I've seen freakier things. 
I am. My name is Asya. You're what? You cut yourself short. You're... I quickly turned to make a break for the exit. I'm leaving now. The guy in black runs after me with apparent interest. I could tell he was reading into the energies of what I almost divulged to him. I almost told him what I need to keep to myself. I barely escaped the grasp of the sinister scientist that is Jerry. I don't want to get myself into more trouble by running my mouth to a stranger on the street. Wait, don't go. He says as he grabs my arm. This time the stranger's grip was accompanied by a jolt of what felt like an intense static shock. Simultaneously, the gaze of the stranger in black fell into my gaze as together we witnessed the same premonition. Guys, I brought back more than locks and bagels. The guy in black stays as he opens the door to the loft. His name is Michael. No shit, Jonathan answers. You know the rules, Mike. No outsiders allowed in. Shelly states as her eyes appear from atop of her book. Who's she? Garrett asks in a way to express that he wants to know more than just my name. Who's here? Jamie asks enthusiastically as she shuffles down from the second level of the loft. Yeah, and Mike brought back a stray with it, Chelly says. Chelly, Mike says. Guys, she's what we're missing. She's number six. Are you sure, Mike? Chelly asks as the gang convenes in the upstairs lounge. Yes, it's her, Mike says. I know I'm just beginning to tap into the access of future energies, but I saw it. We saw it. Aussie and I saw it. We were all gathered around performing a ritual. I felt the energies we were conjuring up together. The energies I felt were nothing like I've experienced before. It's her. So, how did you guys find each other? I asked the gang as they have rejoined me in the downstairs living space. Jonathan answers my inquiry. Fate. Yep, says Shelly. Jonathan and I met first, and then Mike, Jamie, and Garrett fell into the nest. I saw what Mike can do. What's your gift, Shelly? I ask. Mike, lifting from the street performance again? Chelly says, we don't steal. You might not steal, and I don't either. It's reciprocity. If you're blocking the sidewalk, you are therefore slowing the progression of my day, and time is money. Jamie addresses Mike. Taking out the pains of your scarred heart, stemming from your middle school band director telling you to stick to drama, on the more musically inclined again, I see. Shut up, Jamie, Mike responds. Guys, both of you chill out, Chelly demands. You know how you guys arguing affects me. I am mastering the clear senses. I read energies through feeling, sight, and knowing. Lower vibrational energies like these two arguing affects my abilities. It's you, Chelly, says Jonathan. You affect your abilities. You have to be the master of your own mind. Right, Jonathan, Chelly says annoyed. What can you do, Asia? Jamie asks. She's a starseed, Mark interjects. To be honest, being in the presence of others like myself is a bit intimidating, so I don't mind Mike narrating for me. Cool, Garrett says enthusiastically. A starseed, Chelly says. I have heard there are many of you here at this time in Earth's history, but I've never met one of you before. Well, I Mike cuts me off. You're the missing link, Asia. You're welcome to stay here, Asia, Chelly says. We'll help you cultivate your abilities. Next year's 1111 portal will have immense manifesting power with the energies of all six of us. Is this the fresh start my spirit team was hinting at? Here's to new beginnings.